The title of this video is, Are the Writings of Ellen White on the Same Level as the Bible? No, they're above the Bible. In Adventism, they are above the Bible. They are Jesus supposedly speaking, and they are infallible. Not just this, but they are the infallible guide to interpreting the Bible. What's up, y'all? As always, welcome to the channel. I'm back with another reaction video that a viewer submitted and wanted us to respond to. If there's a video like this that you want to see us respond to, let us know in the comments down below. This time, we are looking at a video where SDA conspiracy theorist Walter Veith is answering the question, are Ellen White's writings on the same level as the Bible? Let's see what he says. The Bible is the ultimate greater light. The Bible is the one whereby all standards of doctrine and behavior needs to be measured. So the spirit of prophecy can place a light on the greater light. So it is a lesser light giving emphasis to certain portion of scriptures and making them come alive. That's basically what it does. It doesn't replace the word of God. It doesn't uh, expand upon the word of God other than placing more light at the expose or to expose more light out of the words of the Bible. Yeah, no. The Bible is not the ultimate greater light in Adventism. I know they love to do the whole greater light, lesser light thing because that's what Ellen White claimed, but she doesn't have the greatest reputation of being a logician. Just think about how silly that is, folks. Someone doesn't need a flashlight when they're in the sun. <laughs> we don't need the SDA flashlight, but either way, notice, and we've looked at this before, the Review and Herald, June 3rd, 1971. To be reliable, interpretation must come to us through the same channel through which came the scripture in the first place. But what is the channel through which scripture came to us? The testimony of Jesus or the spirit of prophecy? It was the spirit of Jesus that spoke through the prophets. And then notice the poll quote, the Bible is an infallible guide, but it needs to be infallibly interpreted to avoid confusion and division. So the SDA church claims the spirit of prophecy is where Jesus is speaking. They claim this takes place in Ellen White's writings, hence why they use the term spirit of prophecy to refer to her writings. And very clearly, they claim that in order to properly interpret the Bible, you have to have the infallible interpreter. The what? The infallible interpreter. Which would mean that yes, you guys have put Mrs. White's writings over scripture because you can't even understand and interpret scripture correctly without her. So I agree, she's not on the same level as scripture. She's above scripture. <laughs> it's also why the statement of confidence in her writings, which is something that the uh, general conference puts out every general session, it openly states this, look, the SDA church reaffirms their conviction that Ellen White's writings are divinely inspired, truly Christ-centered, and Bible-based. Rather than replacing the Bible, they uplift the normative character of scripture and correct inaccurate interpretations of it derived from tradition, human reason, personal experience, and modern culture. So Walter, we can't use the Bible as the standard to measure all doctrine and behavior because we can't even understand it correctly without your guys' prophetess, the lesser light, to light the way for us to the greater light. And to claim that she never adds anything to the Bible, but only ever expounds upon what's there, is rather rich considering you guys have an entire great controversy worldview that entails a pre-earth origin story that scripture knows nothing of. Show us in the Bible that Satan was able to twist the heart of Jesus while he was on the cross, causing him to doubt his resurrection and if his sacrifice would be accepted. Show us in scripture that Satan made an accusation against God's law in heaven prior to the creation of the earth, and God is now vindicating his character before all the universe to silence Satan's accusations. While you're at it, by all the universe, that includes all these other beings on these unfallen worlds. Show us all that in the Bible. They can't, because what they mean by this is that since the Bible will simply say things like, there was war in heaven, and Lucifer fell from heaven. Ellen White then fills in details that are not found in the Bible, but they're not an addition because she's commenting on general statements in the Bible. This is just word games. Yes, she adds all sorts of stuff to scripture not found there, which is why they have to funnel all of scripture through their extra biblical great controversy theme, which comes from Ellen White, who claimed it came from God. 
Adventists need to own up to this and be honest and then defend that Ellen White is an infallible interpreter. Drives me crazy when they do this song and dance, when the sources make it clear as day. <laughs> Yet they'll still try and argue it, typically by insulting your intelligence and claiming that you lack reading comprehension. So if people had studied the Bible and kept strictly to the Bible and the Bible alone and what it says, then there would have been no need for a spirit of prophecy. So in other words, what the spirit of prophecy does is to say very plainly what some people obscure regarding the word of God. If people had stuck with the Bible, there'd be no need for the spirit of prophecy, a.k.a. Adventists in the 19th century were the only ones really studying the Bible. It's almost comical when they, when they assert stuff like this because their system of theology is so fundamentally flawed and broken, and it's full full of theological novums and relics of the 19th century that are apparently just plain in scripture. Everybody else through all the centuries prior to them was just too stupid to see them. They weren't really studying the Bible, but that's actually what's consistent with this. Because if you if you recall, we've looked at this before, Ellen White claimed that they were rewarded with light from heaven because of their diligence in studying the Bible. No one was really studying the Bible until the Adventists came along who have this special insight now that they were gifted because of their diligence. Notice, he just played word games. He said the writings of Ellen White simply shed light onto scripture and make clear what others obscure about the word of God, aka she is an infallible interpreter and you need her writings to be able to correctly interpret the Bible. If your interpretation doesn't jive with hers, you're wrong, she's right, and you have to agree with her. He literally just said what's in the Review and Herald article, just in a more uh, obfuscatory way. The title of this video is, Are the Writings of Ellen White on the Same Level as the Bible? No, they're above the Bible. They are Jesus supposedly speaking, and they are infallible. Not just this, but they are the infallible guide to interpreting the Bible. That would be the honest answer. Instead, they play these semantic games of lesser light and greater light, which makes no sense anyways. I don't need a flashlight when I'm in the sun. And the question of inspiration. Now, that is a very, very controversial question. Uh, there is the position that she has the same inspiration as the biblical prophets, but some within our ranks would say that she doesn't have the same authority. Now, that is a bit of an oxymoron, <laughs> because if you're going to have the same inspiration, then surely the, the measure of authority is part of the package, wouldn't you say? Because inspiration without authority really becomes meaningless. If God is speaking th through an individual, then that is the voice of God. So does the voice of God have less authority in some people than in other people? And the, the answer to that must obviously be no, right? Which is why what you just said only three minutes ago doesn't jive with this. Her writings aren't on the same level as the Bible, they insist. They're just authored by the same Holy Spirit that authored the scriptures, and she was inspired no differently than the biblical writers. <laughs> he just recognized that when God speaks, he speaks. There's not a hierarchy of levels when it comes to that. When God speaks, it's equal with every other time he speaks, because what gives those words their status and authority is the one by whom they are spoken, God himself. So if Ellen White's writings are where Jesus is speaking supposedly, then yes. That is on the same level as scripture, but actually above scripture because they're the infallible interpreter of scripture. So cut it out with the mental gymnastics and just own it. This explains why Adventism is such a confused mess of cognitive dissonance. They need to just own that, yes, they believe Ellen White's writings are equal with the Bible in authority. They aren't in addition to the Bible, but they are an infallible interpretive guide where Jesus himself is speaking, giving the correct interpretation of the Bible. Instead, they do these semantic games. So as far as I am concerned, she is authoritative. And there are many people that will try to water down that authority. Uh, there are people in the world that believe that inspiration 
has to be verbal. In other words, God dictates to a person what that person has to say. God doesn't work like that. You can study your Bible. He has never operated like that in any shape or form because God created us with a mind and with freedom of choice. And he will never circumvent our cognitive capacity. He will never coerce. He will never force. So what the prophets envisioned and what they saw, they wrote down in their own words according to the best capacity that they had. And this is how we must read Alan G. White. No, sir. That is not how the Bible describes God's word. It doesn't describe God's word as the prophet's words, where they conveyed to the best of their ability what God showed them. No, God breathed means God breathed. It means God's words, not the prophet's words. And it doesn't make them an automaton. They love doing this. They always try and paint things as like, you know, the other people out there that don't agree with us, they have this real sinister view. It doesn't matter what topic it is. They do this all over the place. They have this wrong view of God that he's this tyrant dictator and he controls people. What the, uh, yeah, when God is the one that's uh, communicating using his own words, he's using a vessel to convey his own words. That doesn't make him an automaton. He's using a broken stick to strike a straight blow. The human being was an instrument in his hands for him to communicate his own words. <laughs> but at least he's honest here because yes, lots of SDAs try and water down that authority. But so did Walter. He said her writings are not on the same level of scripture, which I agree, they're above scripture. They have to be utilized to actually understand the correct interpretation of any given passage. But then he gets into inspiration as if that even has anything to do with the problem here. This is the same thing that Judd Lake appeals to in his book, Ellen White Under Fire, that people's criticisms of Ellen White are invalid because they have this real rigid false view of inspiration. No, that doesn't help you guys. The issue is not verbal dictation over and against the whole person model or whatever it is that they call their, their view. The issue is exactly what Walter just got done saying. If it's God speaking in both places, the Bible and Ellen White's writings, then they are ontologically the same. You then add in that she is an infallible interpreter. Now her writings are above the Bible because you can't understand the Bible without her. It's irrelevant what mode of inspiration you want to defend. You're still saying they're of the same authority. So when they try and bring this up in this context, don't take the bait. It is just a sideshow to distract away from the point. And notice the tail end there. He said, this is how we're to read Ellen White. This is their lowering of scripture to subtly elevate Ellen White's writings. She's the baseline because she had all sorts of errors in her writings, changes that had to be made, etc. So then they have to adopt a form of inspiration that is fallible like she was, even though they claim she's the infallible interpreter. So don't take the bait. They are correct when they say that Ellen White's writings are not on the same level as the Bible. They are above the Bible, though they have the same level of authority as the Bible. To see a more thorough deep dive on this, where we examine over 50 of Ellen White's own statements, check out our funeral service of a false prophet, which you can access here.